Hello everyone, welcome back to another Calamity video, and in this video I want to kill Golem and also unlock Scoria Bars, which should get me a lot of new weapons, armor sets, accessories, all that good stuff. Now I will say it's been a few months now since I last uploaded, so it's good to be back, and I do want to start uploading semi-regularly now, so I hope you enjoy this video and all the videos that come after this. Alright, so I guess I'll start off the episode with fighting Golem. I did prepare the arena, I have two layers of platforms up here, and I also placed a bunch of torches, and also a tranquility candle. Once Golem actually spawns, all of these other mobs, like these lizards down here, will stop spawning because of a calamity feature. And yeah, I'm probably just going to be using a mix of all these weapons. Um, like for example, these things give me life steal. these things just do a lot of damage, and these things have a fast attack. All that stuff, I'll just see what works the best and go from there. I'm not anticipating this being a super difficult boss, because it's still Golem, even though it's Calamity. I do think it'll be funny if they make Golem very difficult in Calamity though. This is kind of a meme. Anyway, let's spawn the boss. Can I click? There we go. Alright. Not much has actually changed right off the bat. He doesn't look that different. Okay, I am all the way zoomed out. But this is the first stage, who knows what's going to happen from here. This arena is so large, I'm not expecting to really even get hit that much, really. Of course, there are the, still the fireballs, which will do a little bit of damage, but it should, it should be manageable. Alright, I think I have to hit the fist. I can't even hit the head yet. Is it always like that in vanilla Terraria? It's been a long time since I played non-modded Terraria. I don't know if this thing actually does give me lifesteal. It doesn't seem to be doing too much. Alright, but I'm being a little more careful now. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure what I could do from there. Maybe I could just try it again, really. Okay, so because I did lose that fight, I think I'm just going to try it again right after. I don't think... There's really anything I can do to improve anything, like, sure I could put down candles and all that stuff, but I just don't think it's necessary. I think I just have to be a bit more careful this fight. I can actually spawn in Golem. Oh, it spawned right on top of me that time. But yeah, that first fight was kind of unfortunate. But hopefully if I'm more careful this time, I should be okay. Yeah, the fireballs, they just go up in the air, and I lose track of them because it takes so long for them to come back down. Like, I think the fireballs were what was doing all the damage last time. Alright, I'm taking a little bit of damage. He's, uh, he does hit hard. Oh, okay, we got a floating golem head that I can actually damage. Which is not normal, I will say. Hopefully this guy doesn't have too much HP because uh, this is going to be kind of difficult. Okay, I can heal about half HP. Golem is a little over half HP. But I am better. I am just far superior to me Golem AI, so I should be completely fine, right? I should be completely fine. This is a lot of lasers. Oh jeez, oh, I was dodging very hard right there. I'm running on adrenaline in real life. This is not, this is not good for my heart. I'm pretty kind of low. Actually, I can take a maybe two hits. I'm not, it's not that close, but I could very easily just get bodied any second. Jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well then, y'all might be more of a challenge than I thought. Okay, so this is the third fight. I did place down four of the buff candles, which are super OP. Those should help me a ton. And really, I just have to be even more careful than the last fight. 
Hopefully Golem won't land right on top of me immediately this time. Alright, already off to a better start because I didn't just get bodied right on the spawn of the boss. Okay, I did get hit by a fireball though. But I'm healing very quickly. Partly due to that one regeneration candle. 0.4 hearts per second regardless of other regenerative factors such as moving and taking damage. Alright, oh we're already in the second stage. Oh, alright, we got the golem head. I'm just gonna heal real quick because this phase stresses me out. I don't know why golem stresses me out. I always find golem difficult. Even though everyone else seems to think it's easy. But then again, I do have... Well, I find Plantera difficult. No, I find Plantera easy. But everyone else thinks Plantera is difficult. I don't know. For me, the difficulty levels of Golem and Plantera are just switched. Compared to what most people tend to experience. Especially this. I mean, like... Oh my gosh. Originally, I wasn't thinking that Calamity made Golem that much di more difficult. But I mean, this is significantly more difficult than Vanilla. Like, look how many lasers there are. It's, it, this, is, this is not how Golem usually is. I would be very surprised if I won this. Because I'm pretty sure at one point I was down to 11 HP. Alright, Golem is flying. Golem is flying. Let me heal. Oh my gosh, yes, I got the heal. Maybe I can actually win this. Alright, I'm gonna go a little quieter, get some more concentration and get adrenaline, get a lot of damage. Decent adrenaline, not too bad. This face seems to have less defense. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Okay, so let's actually check out the loot. First of all, I did get the pick saw outside of the treasure bag. I already have it favorited and, you know, ready for mining. I guess Calamity made it just a guaranteed drop instead of having to go farm Golem to get the pick saw. So that's pretty cool. I also got all of the typical ammos and shadow diamonds from all of the new boss fights. Let's actually read the lore before I open the treasure bag. Golem, a primitive construct. I admire the lizard race for their ingenuity. Though finding faith in such a flawed idol, <laughs> Golem just got roasted, would invariably lead to their downfall. Favorite this item to gain an increased defense while standing still. No downsides to that, I might as well favorite it. I do have to be standing still, but whatever. It's just a small boost. Actually, how much actually is the defense boost? It's 10 defense, so that's actually pretty good. If I make like an AFK farm or something, then I could use that, I guess. Alright, let's actually open the treasure bag now. Boom. Essence of Sunlight. The Staff of Earth. Alright, we got... Got some boulders, some uh, moldy burgers. Burgers. Boulders. I mean, I guess they could be burgers. They're more like meatballs, if anything. Anyways, I forgot where I was. The Beetle Husk. Shiny Stone. Just all that stuff. Okay, so now that I've defeated Golem, I believe I can now mine Scoria Bars in the Abyss with my Pixaw. I'm not completely sure, this is kind of a guess, so let's head over there and find out. Alright, so I'm heading down into the Abyss. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I'm taking a lot of damage just from being in the Sulfuric Sea. But um, hopefully it's not super difficult to survive down here. It's been a long time since I went down here. Probably because I don't really like this place too much. I find it kind of ominous and creepy. Alright, I think this is what I need to mine. Um, I think it's this. Yes, Scoria Ore. Not bad. Alright, let's get a bunch of this. And we'll see how to craft in the Scoria Bars. Bane Miner is so nice. Okay, 
I do have to watch out for the fire that the Scoria or rains down. I do think that does damage to me. Okay, I think if I go any deeper, I get into the real danger zone where I'm just going to die to like giant eels and crap. Which obviously isn't very good. Am I taking contact damage on this ore? I think this does contact damage. No, I probably got hit by the fire. Alright, let's just mine this patch and we'll go see if I can craft with it. Alright, so let's check out some of the crafting recipes for these Scoria bars. Now, a Scoria bar is crafted with 5 Scoria ore. You can see I already made a bunch of it, and it's pretty cheap. I'm glad that I don't have to combine like 5 different resources to make one Scoria bar. Super nice and convenient. Now, let's see what I can craft. Boom. Alright. Fire gauntlet... I'm just gonna scroll through these until I find something interesting. Okay, I think this hydrothermic armor is the next armor set that I want to make. It's crafted with Hellstone, Core of Chaos, and Scoria Bars. It's super cheap. I can make this right away. Now let's actually check to make sure there's a rogue. Yes, there's a rogue piece to make it a rogue set. That's good. Now, do I have an accessory with this set? Um, the Haddle, Hadal. Paddle mantle should this okay so this is a wing this is a set of wings and it does get a boost with the hydrothermic armor so i'm gonna be making that and it is kind of better than the booster that i currently have a little less vertical speed a little less horizontal speed a lot more flight time but most importantly five percent increased damage while wearing the hydrothermic armor that's the main reason I'm going to be using these wings. Alright, so I collected all of the ingredients from my chest to craft the upgraded Ponich Hammer. So I'm guessing this anvil I can craft it at. Yes, the Fallen Paladin's Hammer. Let's craft that. And it's sharp. I'm going to have to reforge that to flawless. And let's actually craft this slicer first too. Just because it's cheap. And it's also a rogue weapon. So let's go reforge these both to flawless. So we can see their true stats. Flawless is just the best reforge for any rogue weapon, I believe. I could just do this, so I could waste all of my money on the Goblin Tinker even faster. And let's actually reforge both of them. Now the Falladen's Paladin's Hammer should be pretty significantly better than this Slicer, just because it's harder to craft. Now let's actually ch test it on these dummies here. Okay. This isn't too bad. See the range. That's solid range. Now let's test the hammer. Okay. Alright, this is... This is insane. What even is this weapon? That's crazy. Let's test it on one dummy, so we'll wait for all of the um, flames or whatever to wear off. So one singular target. A much less impressive number, but on a bunch of targets, yeah, you can really rack in the damage. I believe this is pretty significantly better than my other weapons. Yeah, these effective spheres are actually pretty pretty damaging still. Well, well, they are hitting that one too. The bottom dummy. So I think this Ponage Hammer, or the I guess it's the Fallen Paladin's Hammer now, but I think this is just a lot better than my other weapons. So I think I'm just going to put them in the chest. And maybe if I'm for some reason struggling with this hammer, I'll take them back. It turns out I've actually forgotten about the armor set, which is one of the best parts about these new Scoria bars. So let's craft that up quickly. Uh, this is the right one, it's the rogue. Where's the chest piece? Is that the chest piece? I really want to make sure I'm crafting the right one. I think this is the chest piece. And then the leggings. I don't see him, what am I missing? 
Am I blind? Oh, I might need more Scoria bars. Let's see if I can craft more of those. Oh wait, no. I think I'm missing the cores of chaos, I believe they are. Yeah, it looks like it. I'll have to go get some of those. Alright, so here's the leggings. And let's see if I can craft the wings as well. Let's see, which one are these? Because all of these weird items are very small on my screen. I can't tell them apart. Maybe the wings required something else. Um... Maybe? Not seeing them. Alright, well I'll look for the wings off camera. Okay, so I found the recipe for the wings, and I should be able to craft them now. Yes, there they are. I was missing the Souls of Flight. Boom. Alright, so this is the full hydrothermic set. Equipped the wings as well. And yeah, that should, uh, should be our new full letout hydrothermic with the fallen paladin's hammer. Now, in this video, I do actually want to take on the lunatic, lunatic cultist. I don't know if I'm going to win. I've never fought the cultist before uh, in Calamity. So this is probably going to be the last part of the video if I win or not. So keep that in mind. I just want to give it a shot because if I can take him out, might as well do that. Alright, so let's take this new gear out for a spin. Out for a spin, did that even make sense? Out for a test. Alright. I feel like I'm either going to demolish the cultist, or I'm going to get demolished. I have lifesteal on this. Is this like weird effect? I don't know what's going on, but I have like a lot of weird effects going. Oh. This is kind of difficult to aim, this weapon. I'm going to have to practice my aim a little bit, apparently. Oh, we got a bunch of skulls in the air. I don't know why I'm getting the Inferno Potion buff. I think I'm hitting the decoys. It's probably why I'm failing so hard. Because when I hit the decoys, the Lunatic Cultist goes crazy. Alright, so I don't actually remember what his health is at. I think it was just over half. Which isn't that bad. Like, I definitely got destroyed. But that was my first time fighting the Cultist in Calamity. And, I mean, I wasn't really prepared. I didn't have an arena. Or anything. That was just to see how difficult it would be. So this is going to be all for this episode today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in future Calamity episodes. Bye everyone!